Amen. If you look on the bulletin, you'll see the word blessings all over it. So I have a question for you. What blesses you? Is it your spouse? Is it family? Is it your children? Just children in general. Is it a sunny day, vacation? Or is it winning the lottery? I hope not. When politics goes your way, is that what blesses you? A new house, car, outfit, or dinner out? What blesses you? When things go right, when everyone gets along, that's what works for me. We have a lot of children. That works. It says, though, that scripture informs us the wisest man builds his house on the rock. Scripture informs us that, a, that there was a man, and it was a parable, there was a man who built bigger barns because he was successful and he kept being more and more successful, but he built this new barn and then all of a sudden that night his life was required of him. Scripture says, don't worry about what you will eat, drink, or wear, because there's more to life than eating, drinking, or wearing particular things, or having particular things. It says, by worrying, you can't even add a single hour to your life. You know, we should be comforted by that. Somehow it doesn't stop us from worrying, does it? It says, Jesus said, don't worry even about tomorrow. Because today's war, the today has enough trouble, right? Oh boy. What blesses you? Think about it. Is it a worry free life? We would all think that that would be perfect. But Jesus has something to say about God's blessings. He says it in different Gospels. Today we're looking at what he has to say from the perspective of Luke. So we're turning to Luke 6, it'll be on the wall. Hear the word of the Lord. Then Jesus turned to his disciples and says, God blesses you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. God blesses you who are hungry now, for you will be satisfied. God blesses you who weep now, for in due time you will laugh. What blessings await you when people hate you and exclude you and mock you and curse you as evil because you follow the Son of Man? When that happens, be happy. Yes, leap for joy, for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, their ancestors treated the ancient prophets the same way. What sorrow awaits you who are rich, for you have your only happiness now. What sorrow awaits you who are fat and prosperous now? Hunger awaits you. What sorrow awaits you who laugh now? For your laughter will turn to mourning and sorrow. What sorrow awaits you who are praised by the crowds? For their ancestors also praised false prophets. The word of the Lord. So let's list God's blessings that come out of that passage. The kingdom of God is more than riches we can acquire. The kingdom of God satisfies like the riches meal. God replaces sorrow and sadness with laughter. That's my favorite. When you are hated, excluded, mocked, and cursed as evil because of Jesus, a great reward await you in heaven so be ecstatic how many of us are ecstatic when we come to worship being scorned for your faith affirms your reward earthly riches end when you die you take nothing with you so do not pour yourself into gaining wealth besides your family's going to fight over it when you're gone If you live only to eat, drink, and be merry, remember that tomorrow you die. If you continue only focused on your physical desires, you will be spiritually bankrupt. 
the same for entertainment. If you spend all your time worrying about being entertained, fulfilling your needs and your wants, you will be sad when heaven comes. If you focus solely on being popular as well as being famous or known, you miss kingdom values in eternity. There are kingdom realities. They are different from what we see, what the world values, for we only have this world view. And so Jesus is trying to give us a bigger view. And Christians have a bigger world view that includes more than what you can see or feel. It includes the heavenly realm, the spiritual realm that's all around us all the time, even though we can't see it or perceive it all the time. That's what the Christian worldview contains. And so Jesus is talking to these people in this passage with a bigger view in mind, a far broader view of life. And he says to you, you choose to seek God or not. To seek the kingdom and work to see the kingdom. And that's reality. Kingdom is reality. Or you can ignore it, Jesus says. So there are two kinds of people, the Bible says. There are those who are, have that desire to know God, to see God, to see that spiritual realm. And then there are those who don't. And Jesus calls those who don't resistors of God, since they resist God. So there's two kinds of people, there's two kinds of attitudes. You can discern that for yourself, your own attitude. You can discern. And those who seek God, the Bible says, are blessed. We're blessed. It says that in the Old Testament and the New Testament as well. Those who do not seek God miss that blessing. So are you embracing the blessing? Are you thinking, I know God. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Or do you wake up and go, oh, oh, it's me. I'm worried. Well, we then turn that worry over to the Lord. So how do we do that? How do we begin to see a spiritual reality so it helps us each day when we wake up and we can kind of reassess? And so I thought of people whose circumstances are adverse or whose problems are great and people who have times of loss. We've all lost a lot in the last two years with COVID. And we have lack, not enough money. And there are people who have ha not had enough money even to buy food. That's rare, but that is the truth. Even still, even under those circumstances, Jesus says, God blesses you, riches of God's kingdom. God blesses you and will satisfy you. God blesses you in your grieving, and after a period of time, you will laugh. So Jesus said to them, in your loss, in your lack, in your poverty, you will be utterly blessed by God. Now that is countercultural, is it not? It's countercultural. No matter what, you will be blessed. Now there's a woman that you've all heard of who wrote a song about this. She was born in a one-room cabin in Tennessee. She was one of 12 children. Her father was a sharecropper, and uh, her grandfather was a pastor of a little church, which she went to every week, with, along with those other 11 children, her mother, and her family. She was raised on scripture, and she was raised on gospel hymns. The stories in the Bible encouraged her, taught her, walked alongside her in those days of poverty. Here's the lyrics to one of her songs. Look for the blessings as I read it. Back through the years I go wandering once again, back to the seasons of my youth. 
I recall a box of rags that someone gave us and how my mama put the rags to use. There were rags of many colors. Each, every piece was small and I didn't have a coat and it was way down in the fall. Mama sewed the rags together, sewing every piece with love. She made my coat of many colors that I was so proud of. She, as she sewed, she told a story from the Bible she had read about a coat of many colors Joseph wore, and then she said, Perhaps this coat will bring you good luck and happiness. And I just couldn't wait to wear it, and Mama blessed it with a kiss. My coat of many colors that my mama made for me, made only from rags, but I wore it so proudly. Although we had no money, I was rich as I could be in my coat of many colors my mama made for me. So with patches on my britches and holes in both my shoes and my coat of many colors, I hurried off to school just to find the others laughing and making fun of me in my coat of many colors my mama made for me. And oh, I couldn't understand it, for I felt I was rich. And I told them of the love my mama sewed in every stitch, and I told them all the story mama told me while she sewed, and how my coat of many colors was worth more than those. But they didn't understand it. And I tried to make them see that one is only poor only if they choose to be. Now I know we had no money, but I was rich as I could be in my, my mama made for me, made just for me. The scripture lifted her up, a story her mother taught her. Her mother lifted her right out of her physical poverty out of potential hope, no chance for improvement, and helped her know she was rich inside because she had the Lord. And when you have the Lord, you have everything, everything. She sang in her grandfather's church from the age of six, continued to sing, and eventually became famous. And then she became a philanthropist, and she's used her famous position to help others who don't have enough, who don't have food and people to love them. So if you're a mother or grandmother, if you have nieces or nephews, if you live next door to children, if you have stepchildren and step-grandchildren, if you are a child care provider, but you don't feel like you have enough, you don't feel like you can offer anything, but you're sitting right here in the house of blessing, with the God of blessing, with the Lord of a massive abundance. I want to ask you to lay aside all that loss. Lay aside all that lack. Lay aside all that poverty of spirit and grab a hold of what you have here. Lay aside everything that's happened to you in your life that's been a disappointment and a crushing of you because you've got so much more. You cannot be identified with all of that in the past. Do not let it be your identity. Move into the blessing of the Lord. Move into what he can do for you, what he longs to do. It's everything. It's everything. And instead, you'll be that all that lack, all that hurt will begin to be covered up by abundance. And you will experience it. So lift your eyes to Him today. What did our psalm say? Oh, the joys of those who follow the Lord. Can we say that? Oh, the joys than those who follow the Lord, not the mockers. Oh, the delight of those who take the scripture to heart. Let's say it. Oh, the delight of those who take the scriptures to heart. You are the strong ones. 
say this. I am the strong one. You will bear fruit each season of your life. I will bear fruit each season of my life. You will prosper in all you do. Why? Because you are the Lord's and you have chosen him. Moms and grandmothers, aunts and neighbors, child care workers, people who live next door, to children, are you living into the scriptures? Are you loving the children around you? Are you embracing them with God's love and hope, teaching them all the Lord has taught you? Men and women alike, this is a blessing. This is it. This is a blessing. You have to grab it, follow it, seek it, take it. It's laid before you. Are you embracing it? Amen.